welcome back to the Breakdown Tech. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I have wondered about for a very long time. And that is what is the difference between JPEG and PNG images. If you do any sort of photo editing, you know that those are the most popular images that we see everywhere. But why is that? And that's what I'm going to be diving into in this video. But before we get on into it, I want to remind you that this video is brought to you by Bluehost. Go to the breakdown.xyz slash Bluehost. First link down below to get an awesome website for your business, host your photography, do all of that stuff for just $3.95 a month. There are tons of benefits to Bluehost. I honestly don't have time to go through them here, but you've got free SSL, unlimited emails, unlimited data, and all sorts of other awesome stuff that you come to expect from a web host. Again, that is the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Bluehost. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this, teaching you about what things are in technology every single day of the week. We make tons of awesome videos and I know you'll enjoy it. So uh, yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't already. So what is the difference between PNG and JPG or JPEG image formats. Well, the main difference between the two is the compression algorithm that they use. See, JPEG uses a lossly compression algorithm. That means JPEG gets rid of some of the image information to save the file and make it smaller, right? JPEGs are typically smaller than PNGs, but the reason for that is because they remove some of the image information when they save. This means that JPEG images will reduce the quality of the image as they're saved over and over and over and over again as smaller and smaller files. The image quality will degrade, but the file size will also go down. In contrast, however, PNG uses a lossless compression algorithm. That means when you save a PNG, you won't lose any quality whatsoever. But on the flip side, you'll have a massive file size. I've seen PNGs go upwards of almost a gigabyte. So that's something you almost would never see out of a JPEG image if it's compressed, whereas PNG... Yeah, that's very possible. So what are the use cases for JPEG and PNG? Well, JPEG is used widely in photography, right? When you take a picture with, say, this DSLR camera I'm recording on, it by default saves as a JPEG. This is because photos, like the one you take with the DSLR, typically have smoother transitions between colors and tones and things like that. And that is what JPEGs work great at, those smooth transitions. As you can see behind me, that black and white, not a smooth transition, but up there where that shadow's at and stuff. That's a pretty smooth transition, and that is what a JPEG can do very well. JPEG also provides excellent compression of images with minimal quality loss until you start getting really, 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 really compressed. This is a good thing for things like online websites and stuff. One of the best ways to optimize your website speed is to save all of your images as JPEGs to reduce the file size of all of those images and thus increase your load time. Typically, me and you don't see compression loss when say you decrease a JPEG image by five to 10% of file size. That's because it's not a big difference. The edges of a tree may get a little bit more blurry, but we don't notice that. Our eyes aren't good enough to pick up on that. The only way we're going to see it is if we zoom in really, really far and see a side-by-side -side comparison. That's when we might catch it, but overall, we're not going to see that reduction in quality. Once we start getting 50, 75%, we're definitely going to see it. But a small 5 to 10% decrease, we're not going to see at all. This compression isn't something you can get with PNG because it uses a lossless compression algorithm. It wants to protect that exact format and that exact look that you had originally. And so by saving it as a PNG, you're not getting any file reduction size and that can hurt when uploading it online, storing it on your hard drive even. I mean, if you have a ton of PNG images, you're going to run out of space a lot faster than if you have a ton of JPEG images. One final note about JPEG here is it has the ability to embed the EXIF file, E-X-I-F file. And what this is, is the information that is related to the image, like when and where it was captured, color profile files and all that other information that photographers really, really, really like to know. That stuff can help out so much when you're even just browsing through files to be able to know where an image was taken. That can help so much when you're doing that. And JPEG is the only image format that allows that to happen. PNG doesn't have that information. However, JPGs can 
can have that information, but they don't always. Sometimes in compression, you strip that stuff out and it can make the file size of a JPEG even smaller without quality loss. So moving on to the use case of PNG, it is mostly used when creating or altering graphics, logos, cartoon images, or just single color backgrounds, right? That's when PNG is going to shine and that's the use case most of us see it in. Logos and digital created images in Photoshop and stuff like that. So for example, a background image that's all one color, right? Say you just have a white background or a gray background image that you're going to be using on your phone or on your computer. PNG can actually compress that single background into a very small image size because basically it's one big pixel, right? All of the pixel information is the exact same. All it needs to do is say, hey, this is the pixel information, now replicate it across the entire image. It's that simple. However, when you have a very complex image, like an actual photo, PNG has to save each individual pixel information, right? And when it's doing that, it's going to take up a lot more space than JPEG, who is lossly compression and can figure that out better. Another note is that PNG does allow for transparent backgrounds. That's something that I personally love about it, and the reason I use it the most is to get a transparent background on an image that otherwise wouldn't be able to have one because JPEG does not support transparent backgrounds. You try to save a JPEG with a transparent background, it'll just turn it white. So yeah, that's something that uh, is worth noting here, that if you want to save files with a transparent background, PNG is the way to go. So overall, JPEG is great for photography and captured images with a camera or something like that, and PNG is great for graphic design, cartoons, and, and things of that nature, where images are created digitally and drawn and things like that, not captured with a camera. And there's the ins and outs of PNG and JPEG images. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to help you out. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that stuff for more awesome content exactly like this every single day of the week. Again, this has been The Breakdown, and I am out, guys. Peace.